Disney and Pixar is turning red, introduces Mei Li, a confident, dorky, 13-year-old torn between staying her mother's dutiful daughter and the chaos of adolescence. Her protective, if not slightly overbearing mother, Ming, is never far from her daughter, an unfortunate reality for the teenager. As if changes to her interests, relationships, and body weren't enough, whenever she gets too excited, which is practically always, she poofs into a giant red panda. This is Turning Red on Night of the Movies on the Cross Border Interviews. Let's go. I'm Maylin Lee. I wear what I want, say what I want, 24-7, 365. I know, it's a lot. But I don't got time to mess around. Oh, about that hustle, am I right? Poor <gasps> town! This is gonna be the best year ever! And nothing's gonna get in my way! Breakfast is ready. <sighs> Coming. <sighs> it's gonna be me. Ah! Is everything okay? <laughs> I'm a gross red monster. <laughs> Don't look at me. Stay back. This happened already. What did you say? Our ancestors had a mystical connection with red pandas. Are you kidding me? This little quirk runs in our family. Oh. You are so cute. Sick. I've always wanted a tail. I'm a freak. We love you, May. You're our girl. <sighs> Whoa. You're you. Any strong emotion yes! will release the panda. Abby, hit me. Do you know how dangerous this is? You'll get whipped up into a frenzy and panda all over. <laughs> O-M-G! My whole life I've been perfect little May May. Yeah! But maybe I like this new me. <laughs> Mama's girls. <laughs> Turning red, Disney and Pixar's greatest accomplishment in Canada since end of sentence. Um, Michael, what were your thoughts on this newest addition to the Princess Collection, Disney Collection, Toronto Canadian Connection film? Um, I love Disney's new interest into the generational trauma series that they're doing. Um, I can't wait to see which generational trauma they unearth next for their audience. Um, <laughs> Just, it's not going to be homosexuality. <laughs> not yet. We almost, we did get that in better Nate than ever, but it was not full-fledged. Um, <laughs> but I really liked this movie. I really liked it a lot. I thought it was fun. I thought the main character was really fun. I mean, there's a lot of controversy over the fact that they were like, talking about boys and being boy crazy and like her excited about boys, which we can say is her getting horny for boys. Like Disney never talks about being horny. What are you talking about? She became a red panda every time she saw a boy she liked. Yeah, that doesn't mean anything. It just means I... she got excited because she is a up and coming teenager who does not have emotional feelings according to Disney. I also liked, um, they talked about periods in it. I mean, they talked about things that are affecting 13 year old girls. It maybe wasn't necessarily a movie for kids, but I don't think they necessarily were marketing the movie for like youth. They were marketing it for that teen 
demographic that's going through these things that are falling in love with boy brands. Like, I don't know about y'all, but like when I was a teenage girl, no, <laughs> but like you heard all it here first, girls, people. Yes. Michael Nichols Bay the, is a girl. No, all the, all of the like girls I knew in high school that like loved a boy band and like drew the m and and like, were like had their group of friends and like this was all of like my friends in high school like I could see so many of them in each of these different girls and it was like it was really cool to see an act like a movie that told these things and talked about these topics and I really liked it and I kind of loved the little boy band moment I do want to know why if there's five of them they're called four star or four town or whatever it was called oh four town they were four town because they were the four townies got it um, but like, still, there are five of them. Why not? Why four? I, I don't know. I also really like the voice. Scarborough, too. York, Toronto, Mississauga. Formed the. <gasps> Wait, is that the reference? Yeah. <laughs> See, like it's a Canadian. This is why. This is why mm, you learn something new every day. That's why they're the four town. I'm because, okay with that. that's cool because in, in 1990 I want to say 93 or 97 I know that's a really weird gap there but it's, uh, the provincial government introduced the Toronto amalgamation which they brought four cities into one four towns into one love that yeah so there you go that's such a cool reference and hypothetically and this is the weird part there was technically five but the fifth one was never really a it was a community more than a town so that's why there's five of them oh my god <laughs> okay obsessed never mind change my mind i think it was brilliant um <laughs> i love a good reference and i did not know this reference canadian history 101 on the night of the movies <laughs> I, as a non-canadian i need to know these things so i'm very happy there to learn go. i really like the movie i thought it was fun i found the story was fun i found the ending was really great too. I mean, I definitely, I liked it. What about you? I'm gonna assume you didn't like it because I did like it. <laughs> um, I know people- It was just an animated have, movie. <laughs> I, I, I know people enjoy the dead silence of us not talking from time to time because then I can't get into trouble. Um, I enjoyed this movie. I oh. thoroughly enjoyed this movie. <laughs> I know. Oh. I watched, rewatched it a second time. So I watched it the first time, and then I rewatched it again because it's like, okay, everyone's talking about it. Let's let's give it another chance. And I watched it again. It might be the Canadian in me, but. I like their references. I remember going downtown Chinatown in Toronto. I, I remember getting on the TTC. So for a Canadian, I was so excited to see all these things. But I think that was the first time I watched it and I didn't really get the story. And then I watched the actual movie and watched the movie, not visually watched the movie, if that makes sense. Like I actually paid attention to the story sure. and all that. I can see this being a TV show. I can see this being a Turning Red 2. I can see this being a movie anthology. Um, Disney has hit it out of the park on this one, I believe, because it might be, it may not be everyone's cup of tea, like Michael said. It might not be the cup of tea that a five-year-old girl is going to sit down and watch Frozen like, but if Disney wants to survive in the ever-changing world that we live in, and understandable, they're going through some issues right now, they need to adapt to with the realities that those kids that grew up watching Frozen are now 13, are now 15. They need uh -huh. something else to cheer for. And if they want to keep them coming back, they're going to do movies like this. And Turning Red was a knock-out-of-the-park movie. Yeah, um, it was a great movie. The school yard scenes with the classmates and who the the like the like their her classmates and the different personalities is truly Canadian. The only criticism I'm gonna say here, and this is this is gonna be one of those, oh, why would you say that? It means nothing. 
if you're going to do a Canadian movie, have Canadian actors in it, please. And I, and I mean that with all due respect. Because Sandra O, oh, God bless her, I love her, she was great. There wasn't that many other Canadian actors in this. There was a lot of B ones, but B like like background characters, but there wasn't that many like known Canadian actors. And we have an immense talent pool up here in Canada. And if you're doing a, a movie based in Toronto, Toronto, Ontario's capital, the second large, well, the largest city in all of Canada, and you're going to do it without Canadian actors, shame on you, Disney shame but i i enjoyed it i really did but that was my only criticism that i had throughout the movie because after i watched it for the second time i went through and i looked at all the actors like oh that person's from la that person's from new york that person's from texas that person's from san antonio oh which is texas so fuck off um but <laughs> i i was just in, not impressed with that that was the only that's the only thing i have to and i i try to have negative comments to say about everything that's the only uh, one I could find. You. <laughs> it's a joke. Yeah, and then it's a joke. I, and then and then I get the attacks of saying I'm disturbing and I'm upsetting people. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so Michael, out of five, what would you give the movie? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Actual tension in this show right now. <clears throat> Can you just feel it? <laughs> no, I'd give it a four. I think <laughs> I I liked it a lot. I. Uh, I can see them franchising with it either through TV show or through movie like sequels or whatnot. Um, I think I'd give it a four. Just. It wasn't like, wow, this is amazing. I need to rewatch it. I really liked it. I don't know if I necessarily was the target demographic. That's just like I liked Encanto a lot. I don't know if I was the target demographic for it. Um, I, I think that this is a great movie. I think this is going to be nominated for an Oscar and animated feature. Um, yeah, I think it'll be nominated for an Oscar next didn't year. It, didn't it come out last year? No, it came out this year. It recently came out. Oh, so it might be uh, Mitchell's versus the Machines this year. The one that came out super late. Well, super or Raya and the Last Dragon. No, uh, Mitchell's Ryan and the Last Machines Dragon came also out came in April. Out early. Oh, Raya came out around April, uh, March, April last year. I thought August. Was it August? Yeah. No, it was, it was a sum. It was their. It was their attempt to have a summer blockbuster. Wait, no, because I remember watching Raya and the Last Dragon in L.A. Maybe you had a screener version? Oh, I thought I it came out. I, 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 I watched so. it later on, so. Hey, everyone, this is the great thing about this random 10-minute episode that becomes 15, and this is why they become longer than they actually are, is because we always disagree on when things came out. And then we got to fact check it. And then when we fact check it, we do it in real time. March 5th, 2021. Oh, I apologize. You were right. I was wrong. Come I, no, no, me. I wasn't trying to I be. Apologize. I apologize. I'm sorry <laughs> if, I, if I've disturbed you and upset you. No, anyone stop. Who's... Calm down. Breathe. <laughs> Take a breath. Um, you know, I think that this could be the Raya or Mitchell's and the Machines, like coming out super early and getting nominated and probably it might win. It might not. Depends on what else Disney does this year. That's true. That's true. I'm going to give it a four as well. I, I'm going to be honest. I, I like the movie. It, like you said, it may not be my demographic that they were going for, but let's be honest. Uh, Disney usually goes for the gay homosexual demographic all the time. So we are kind of their demographic for anything they put out, no matter what it is. So as much as, oh, we're not the demographic, we are the demographic because they know the gays have expendable income so they can go out and watch these movies in theaters. Huh? But just don't show gay kissing. Um, overall, I liked it. Like I said, my only criticism is if you're going to do a Canadian movie, have Canadian talent. So that's, 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 that's my, that's, that's my two cents on that movie. So with that, that is 
turning red. I was about to say Ryan the Last Dragon on Night of the Movies on the Crossword Interviews with Chris Brown and Michael Nicholspate. See you later.